the light of guidance 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habibullah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurallah The Prophet of Rahma, the intercessor of Ummah, the owner of Jannah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has very beautifully said the one who recites durood, salutation, salawat and salam once upon me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers ten mercies upon that person subhanallah 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 alhamdulillah another beautiful narration it is mentioned in al-qawlul badi that Sayyidina Ali al-Murtada karamallahu ta'ala wajhahu al-kareem narrated the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said your recitation of salat upon me is protection for your duas. It leads to the pleasure of your Rabb Azza wa Jal and it is a cause of the purity of your deeds. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Habibi ya Rasulallah. Marhaba, khusham didu, welcome to one and all to another beautiful, exciting and wonderful episode in Silsila of the series known as The Light of Guidance. MashaAllah, as you all know, The Light of Guidance uh, refers to the beautiful religion of Islam, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen of his beloved and most noble Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanAllah. And uh, very beautifully, alhamdulillah, uh, some topics were discussed previously uh, regarding you know, how to reform ourselves regarding our hidden diseases, regarding the beautiful zat of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the personality of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the awliya kiram, and many more uh, beautiful topics were discussed, alhamdulillah. And today, once again, we are back with uh, another exciting topic, another beautiful topic for today. And today we will be discussing the parables of dua being answered in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah. So today inshallah we'll be listening to the effective ways of how our du'as can be answered and accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know what actions should we do. I mean people com complain, I'm making this du'a for so long, I had this du'a in my heart, um, I'm making du'a in the court of Allah, is my du'a accepted, is my du'a not, not accepted, whatever the case is, but uh, mashallah, 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 alhamdulillah, today inshallah we'll be discussing this excellent and beautiful topic. So be with us inshallah from beginning to end, hopefully many of your questions will also be answered in today's episode in Silsila and uh, remain with us till the end of today's Silsila. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Before we carry on, let's make good intentions. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned Niyatul Mu'mini khayrun min amalihi. The intention of a believer is better than his action. The more good intentions you make, the more reward you will attain from the exalted court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, subhanallah. And we can make intentions that, uh, you know, whilst lowering my eyes or whilst, uh, you know, concentrating basically, I will inshallah focus on whatever is being discussed today. Um, inshallah, I will try my level best to sit from beginning to end. I will not divert my attention because remember, we are discussing the matters of deen. And sometimes, you know, if your attention is not properly focused, Maybe you might misunderstand something. Huh? Something was said, it is lawful, you understood it is unlawful because your attention was not directed towards the episode. So whatever you are doing, please make sure that in this one hour, in this few minutes which we have, inshallah, you will try your level best to remain focused. You will try your level best to concentrate, inshallah, and listen to everything attentively from the beginning to, to the end. At the same time, you can make the intention that inshallah, whatever... Uh, we learn in today's episode in Silsila, we can pass the message on to others as well. Uh, we will first and foremost try and act upon it ourselves and then we'll pass the message on to others as well. Inshallah, inshallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. A very beautiful narration is mentioned in Tirmizi Sharif. That Sayyidina Fudala bin Ubaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated that the beloved and most noble Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting in the masjid. 
a man came and offered salah and made dua saying these words, Allahumma ghfirli warhamni. That is, oh Allah Azza wa Jal, forgive me and have mercy upon me. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ayyuhal musalli ajilta. Oh, the one who performed salah, you have hurried. You have, you have done it quickly. Then mentioning the method of dua, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you complete your salah, first praise Allah Azza wa Jal in a manner that He Azza wa Jal deserves and recite salat upon me, then make dua. Subhanallah. The narrator has said, after him, another person offered salah, then praised Allah Azza wa Jal and recited salat upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, salah offering person, make dua, it will be answered. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. My dear Islamic brothers, very beautifully we learn from this that one of the methods in which our du'as can be accepted in the exalted court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that after performing salah, we first glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we recite durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then we make du'a in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah that will be a means of our du'a being accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Likewise, it is very beautifully mentioned in Fabaili Dua that uh, the beloved father of Ala Hazrat Mujadridin of Millat, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, beloved father, Hazrat Allama Mawlana Naqi Ali Khan, Rahmatullahi ta'ala, alayhi, has stated, one should glorify Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning and in the end because there is none other than Allah Azza wa Jal who likes his own glorification. He Azzawajal gets very pleased on a little praise and grants countless of blessings. He Rahmatullahi Ta'ala further mentions, one should recite Salat upon the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his blessed family, the Ahl Bayt at heart and the blessed companions, Sahaba Ikiram Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Ajma'een as Salat al Nabi is accepted in the blessed court of Allah and Allah Azzawajal does not do such that He Azzawajal accepts the beginning and the end of the dua and rejects the middle of it. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. In other words, very beautifully, Allama Mawlana Naqi Ali Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala is giving us this teaching. When you make dua, praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the beginning, praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at the end. Recite durood upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the beginning, recite durood upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the end, and in between your dua. So the praise inshallah will be accepted, the durood will be accepted inshallah, and in between your dua is this, your dua will also be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So very beautifully, it is also mentioned in Tirmizi Sharif that Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Khalifa Muslimin, Amir al muminin the second Khalifa of Islam, one of the greatest Sahabi of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he has mentioned and he has said, Inna dua mawqoofun bayna as-samai wal ard, la yas'adu minhu shay'un hatta tusalli ala nabiyyika. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, subhanallah. He says dua is restricted between the earth and the sky. It does not go upwards until you recite salat upon your beloved Nabi. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu ta'ala wajhahu al-kareem has narrated Ad-du'a'u mahjubun anillahi hatta yusalla ala muhammadin wa ahli baytihi. Subhanallah, he says dua is the hijab from Allah Azza wa Jal until salat is not sent upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his blessed family. Allah, Allah, Allah. Likewise, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Ala Hazrat, Imam Ahl Sunnah very beautifully mentions and he says, O Aziz, dua is a bird and salat ala nabi is its largest feather. So how can a bird fly without its main feather? In other words, a bird cannot fly without its, its wing's main feather. Similarly, dua is like a bird and Salat al-Nabi is like its main feather. Therefore, how will the bird which does not have the main feather in its wing fly? Similarly, how can a dua be answered which is devoid of Salat al-Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. So this is one of the very beautiful and uh, wonderful methods which our pious ulama kiram Oliyai Izam, pious predecessors have given us that one of the ways in which your dua can be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
You recite Durood upon Nabi Sallallahu upon the Ahl al-Bayt, you send Salat and Salam upon the Sahaba al-Kiram, Subhanallah. And then you make your Dua. And when you're terminating also, praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, recite Durood upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Alhamdulillah, this is the method. If you look at the Dua which Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah make, this is our method. I mean, how do we start our Dua? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. What is this? This is praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. All praise due to Allah who is the Rabb of all the Alameen. Hmm? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So the praise is done. Then we say, Wassalatu wassalamu ala khatam in Nabiyyin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyid al Mursaleen. Or any durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we started with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we make our du'as, Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina adha bannar. Allahumma rabbi ja'ani muqima salati wa min zurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal du'a. Rabbana ghfir li wa li walidiyya wa lil mu'minina yawm yaqum al hisab. And any other du'a which we have, we make it. And then what do we do at the end? After we make all our du'as, you know, Ya Allah, fulfill this du'a, Ya Allah, all the sick people grant them shifa ikamla, those that passed away, grant them high and lofty place in general for those, Ya Allah, allow all of us to go to the, um, the cities of Makkah al Mukarramah and Madinah al Munawwara with our parents, with our Murshid al-Kareem, inshallah. After we make all these lovely du'as, at the end what we do? إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما and everyone collectively recites the word upon النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصلي عليه and the end سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين so الحمد لله رب العالمين Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the two praise of Allah SWT in the beginning and the end of the dua. Hmm? Then after the first praise we had Salat al Nabi, before the last praise we have Durood upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in between our dua is there. This is the perfect way of making dua in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And by Allah, this is one of the means, the ways in which your dua can be accepted in the court of Allah. سبحان الله تعالى سبحان الله سبحان الله صل على الحبيب صل الله تعالى على محمد صل الله تعالى عليه وسلم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله سو الحمد لله we have very beautifully discussed one of the beautiful methods in which our dua can be accepted in the court of Allah everyone should uh, make the intention that insha Allah azawajal from today whenever I make dua I will try my level best that this should be the method and the way in which I make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, 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 ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Inshallah, we will take a short break now and listen to a beautiful kalam in the praise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as soon as we return, inshallah, from this beautiful kalam, we will carry on our discussion regarding how dua can be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please be with us. Enjoy this beautiful kalam. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. مدینے جانے والو جاؤ جاؤ فی امان اللہ مدینے جانے والو جاؤ جاؤ فی امان اللہ کبھی تو اپنا بھی لگ جائے گا بستر مدینے میں نہ ہو مایوس دیوانوں پکارے جاؤ تم ان کو نہ ہو مایوس دیوانوں پکارے جاؤ تم ان کو بلائیں گے تمہیں بھی ایک دن سرور مدینے میں سرور مدینے میں سوچتا ہوں میں وہ گھڑی کیا جب گھڑی ہوگی سوچتا ہوں میں وہ گھڑی کیا جب گھڑی ہوگی جب درے نبی پر ہم سب کی حاضری ہوگی جب درے نبی پر ہم سب کی حاضری ہوگی سوچتا ہوں میں وہ گھڑی کیا جب گھڑی ہوگی آرزو ہے سینے میں گھر بنے مدینے میں آقا آرزو ہے سینے میں
आरजू है सीने में घर बने मदीने में हो करम जो बंदे पर बंद परवरी होगी हो करम जो बंदे पर बंद परवरी हो बंद परवरी हो सोचता हूँ मैं वो घड़ी क्या जब घड़ी हो घड़ी हो जब डरे नबी पर हम सब की हाजरी हो बात क्या है बाद सबा इतनी क्यों मुआतर है बात क्या है बाद सबा इतनी क्यों मुआतर है सब्ज सब्ज गुंबद को चूम कर चली होगी सब्ज सब्ज गुंबद को चूम कर चली होगी कर चली हो सोचता हूँ मैं वो घड़ी क्या जब घड़ी हो जब डरे नबी पर हम सब की हाजरी हो सौ खुलेंगे उसके लिए रामतों के दरवाजे सौ खुलेंगे उसके लिए रहमतों के दरवाजे नात मुस्तफा जिसने एक भी सुनी होगी नात मुस्तफा जिसने एक भी सुनी हो एक भी सुनी हो सोचता हूँ मैं वो घड़ी क्या जब घड़ी हो जब घड़ी हो जब डरे नबी पर हम सब की हाजरी हो देख तो नियाजी जरा सो गया क्या दीवाना देख तो नियाजी जरा सो गया क्या दीवाना उनकी याद में शायद आख लग गई होगी उनकी याद में शायद आख लग गई होगी हो सोचता हूँ मैं वो घड़ी क्या जब घड़ी हो जब डरे नबी पर हम सब की हाजरी हो बुला लो हम गरीबों को बुला लो है मेरे आका मैं आऊ आप के दर पर करम हो मेरे आका सलूर हबीब सल्ला महमद सल्ला ब्यूटीफुल्लाइट ऑफ गाइडेंस अलहमदिल्ला 
We were discussing the topic regarding the parables of du'as being answered in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are those beautiful methods, the beautiful ways in which du'a can be readily accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah. And uh, subhanallah. And we discussed that one of the effective ways is to recite durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa First praise Allah, then durood, then durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then you du'a. And at the end also drew the upon Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the praising of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and then inshallah the dua will be accepted in the court of Allah. But at the same time we need to understand the importance of dua. How important dua is. How how necessary dua is. In fact, dua is so important. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself has discussed and mentioned regarding dua in the Holy Quran. Very beautifully, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions in Surah Mu'min. Ayat number 60, the 24th para. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa qala rabbukum mudu'uni astajib lakum. Translation from Ganzul Iman. And your Rabb has proclaimed, Pray to me, I shall answer your prayer. Subhanallah. Likewise, in Ayah 186 of Surah Baqarah, the second para, Allah Ta'ala mentions, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb. Ujibu da'wat ad-da'i idha da'ani. Translation from Kanzul Iman and O oh dear Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when my bondman question you concerning me then surely I am close I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he calls on me Subhanallah Subhanallah Alhamdulillah the Holy Quran is mentioning about dua Allah Ta'ala is mentioning I, I, I accept the dua I answer the call of the one who calls to me I accept the dua of the one who makes dua to me Subhanallah. And we look at the blessed life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see the emphasis of dua. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on every step, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that there is a dua. Before we eat, we read dua. Before we go to sleep, we read dua. After we eat, we make dua. When we wake up, we make dua. Before entering the house, we make dua. When we leave the house, we make dua. Before drinking water, after drinking water, we make dua, right? Before entering the toilet, we make dua. When we come out from the toilet, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So basically in different aspects of our life, in different scenarios, different situations, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has motivated us and persuaded us that you need to make dua, you need to make dua, you need to make dua. That's how important it is to make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves when a person calls him, when a person asks him, when a person makes dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because undoubtedly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. He is our only creator. He is one. There is no partner. There is no sharik. There is no children. There is no daughter, sons, nothing. He is alone. He is one. And our duty as believers, as slaves, as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as bondsmen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our duty is that we need to ask only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, the method is that when we ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we use the wasila, we use the means, we use the medium of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the Anbiya alayhi wa sallam, of the Sahaba kiram, of the Ahl bayt athar, of awliya kiram. Because inshallah our aqeedah and belief is that what the blessed names, what the wasila, what the means, what the medium, of these pious personalities, our dua will also be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us. He grants us via his beloved Nabi. He grants us via Ghosi Azam. He grants us via Khaja Gharib Namaz. He grants us via his beloveds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grants everyone to everything. So our duty is to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should make dua, we should cry, we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who cries in his court, who makes dua from the bottom of his heart in his court. Dil se jo baat nikalti hai, asar rakti hai, par nahi, magar taqat hai, parwaz rakti hai. It is important. When a person makes dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of his heart, you must try it one day. The hajjud time, everyone is sleeping. You wake up, you make wudu, you put the musalla down, you start your salah, and then you raise your hands. And at that time, nobody is watching you. Everyone is sleeping, the roads are quiet, the area is quiet, it's quiet, dead silence. At that time you make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, 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 Allah. At that time the dua comes from the bottom of your heart. And maybe you might cry, maybe you'll weep, maybe you'll shed some tears. And you must cry. 
It's not something to be ashamed about. It's not something to be shy about. Now, why are you shy to cry in the court of your Allah? Allah Ta'ala created you. He gave you everything. He bestowed upon you everything. He gave you all the blessings. So why are you shy? Cry, open-heartedly cry and make dua in the court of Allah. Inshallah, Azawajal, the dua will be accepted in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The condition is, it must come from the heart. It must be from the bottom of your heart. It must be full of jazba. It must be drowned in the love of Allah and His beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you will see how your dua will be accepted in the court of Allah. So, jo maangne ka tariqa hai, us tara maango. Dare kareem se bande ko kya nahi milta. But there is a way of asking. There is a way of begging in the court of Allah. There is a way of making dua in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Subhanallah, mashallah. So, because we are discussing the Greatness of making dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some beautiful hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in front of me. A very beautiful hadith in Tirmizi Sharif that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, A dua mukhul ibadati. Dua is the essence of worship. Maghz, the essence of worship. Subhanallah. Likewise, another beautiful narration in Tirmizi Sharif that Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, nothing is better than dua before Allah azza wa jal. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Likewise, a beautiful hadith in Muslim Nabi Ya'la that Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu has narrated that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not tell you of such a thing that will bring you protection against your enemy and increase your sustenance, increase your risk, make dua to Allah azawajal day and night because dua is the weapon of a mu'min, of a true believer. Subhanallah. Look at the words of my beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Motivating words. That this will bring your, 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 your barakah and your risk. This will increase your sustenance. This will give you, you know, a better lifestyle. Your problems will be removed. Your difficulties will be removed. Ask in the court of Allah. Nah? Why are you shy? Why don't you want to make dua? Why don't you want to ask? I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahman. He is rahim, the most merciful, most generous, most kind, most forgiving, most merciful. Without asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is already giving you so many bounties, so many blessings. Tell me, when did it happen? At night before you went to sleep, your fridge was full of food, your cupboards, you know, all these things were, were packed with your groceries, with your food, with your bread, your milk, whatever the case is. And morning you didn't wake up for Fajr and you went on a table, breakfast time, you open your fridge and the food has all disappeared. Did it ever happen? You open your cupboard and the food disappeared. You open your pantries and everything was gone, your milk, your bread. It didn't happen. That you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but still He is giving you. On the other hand, you obey Allah Azza wa Jal, He also gives you. You believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives you. You don't believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, He is still giving you. He is giving the entire creation. Those that came, He has given them. Those that are here, He is giving them. Those that will come, He will give everyone. And nothing is getting short from the beautiful mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There is nothing short. He is Malik Kul. He is our Lord. He is the God. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is qadir mutlaq he has power over everything. So Allah Ta'ala is giving everyone. There is nothing short in the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There is nothing short in the karam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is giving. But how beautiful is that when you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then you know how much Allah Ta'ala will give you. Look, my banda is asking me. My banda is making dua in my court. He has this problem, he came to my court. He has this issue, he came to my court. He is worried here, he came to my court. He is suffering here, he came to my court. He has this financial problems, family problems, this worries, that worries. He didn't go anywhere, he came to my court. And I am qadir mutlaq I have power over everything. I can do whatever I want. Nobody can question the authority and the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how beautiful that will be. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the pride amongst the angels. Let's see, this banda came to me to ask. Subhanallah, so you must become witness, I am accepting his dua, I am fulfilling his dua, I am giving him what he wants, but ask in the court of Allah. Again, I am telling you, Everything you will get from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but there is a way of asking, there is a way of making dua. Adab, respect, all of this you need to know. 
In fact, in every moment a person needs to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only when you're worried you must, you, must, you must make dua in the court of Allah. No! When Allah ta'ala gave you blessings, gave you bounties, gave you things, hmm? apparently there is no difficulties, everything is going smoothly, alhamdulillah, then make dua in the court of Allah, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you think dua is only if you have a wealthy problem, or dua is only if you have financial issues, family issues, then only you must make dua? No! You can make dua for hidayat every moment of your life. You can make dua for iman, safety of iman every moment of your life. You can make dua for jannat every moment of your life. You can make dua for the protection from jahannam every moment of your life. Protection from the azab cover every moment of your life. Dua is not only when there is any happiness, when there is goodness, when there is prosperity, then you make dua. No. A true believer is when there is distress, he makes dua in the court of Allah. When he is happy, he makes dua in the court of Allah. When the problem comes, he makes dua in the court of Allah. Problem is removed, he makes dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any happy occasion, he makes dua in the court of Allah. Any sad occasion, he makes dua in the court of Allah. Every moment of your life, you must make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I gave you a few examples of the dua you can make. These duas you can make your entire life. You can never ever be tired of them. Because by Allah, nobody knows are you going to leave this world on Iman or not. Nobody knows are you going to definitely enter Jannah or not. Nobody knows are you going to be saved from the azab cover or not. Nobody knows how you're going to leave this world. You must leave this world with salamti, with peace, in a good manner. Allah must save you from a horrible death. Nobody knows anything. So make these du'as in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will see the blessings, you will see the wonders, you will see the beauty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is commanding you and telling you that, you know, come ask me, I'm going to grant you, I'm going to give you. But insan, human being, we are so lazy, we are so tired, we are so worried, we, we have business, we have this, we have that, that we don't have time to make du'a in the court of Allah. al billah. Every night before you sleep, make a du'a in the court of Allah. Ya Allah, today, whatever sins I have committed, forgive me for the sins. Ya, 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 ya Allah, today, I hurt that person. I hurt him. He wasn't, it wasn't right what I did. Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, today, I did this sin. Ya Allah, forgive me. I'm making tawbah from it. Ya Allah, make tomorrow a good day. Make tomorrow a day where I can rectify myself. Make tomorrow a day where there is barakah in my risk. Make tomorrow a day where there is blessings in my sustenance. Make this dua before you sleep. When you wake up in the morning, make dua. Perform Fajr Salah, perform the Hajj Salah, make dua early in the morning. Ya Allah, make this day a beautiful day. Ya Allah, make it such that, you know, today we, we, we get lots of barakah. Make it such that today, you know, there is peace and harmony amongst ourselves. Make it such today we don't fight with each other. Make it such today there is barakah in our house. Make it such today there is barakah in our workplaces. There is barakah amongst our colleagues, amongst our, our friends, our family members. Give barakah in my parents' lives. Give barakah in my children's lives. Give barakah in their lives, in their risk, in their sustenance. Make dua in the court of Allah. After you eat, make dua. If you didn't want to give us, Ya Allah, we could do everything, but there would be no food on our table. Ya Allah, you made the means. You brought this food on our table. You made it such that we are eating, Alhamdulillah. There are millions out there who don't have food. There are millions out there who don't have water. But you made it such that we are eating today. Ya Allah, we thank you for it, Alhamdulillah. You can make this dua. There are so many du'as you can make, so many occasions for you to make du'a, but the condition is that make it from the bottom of your heart, you will see the blessings yourself. The moment you start thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment you start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, 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 remember Allah ta'ala is Jawad, Allah ta'ala is Kareem, Allah ta'ala is Rahman, Allah ta'ala is Rahim. He is going to give you, He will give you, He is giving you, He has given you. He will continue to give you, but ask him, ask from the divine court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. With these words, inshallah, we'll take a short break now and uh, listen to a few madani pools, madani flowers, inshallah. And as soon as we return, inshallah, once again, we'll carry on our beautiful and lovely discussion, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Respect for your mother. And inshallah, you will gain the blessing and the bounties of Allah Almighty. Sayyidina Bayezid Bastami Rahmatullah has said, during a very cold night, my mother asked me for a glass of water. I went to bring a glass of water, but she had fallen asleep. When I came, I did not feel it appropriate to wake her up. Therefore, I stood near her, holding the glass of water, waiting for her to wake up so that I could present it to her. I stood for a long, long time. Meantime, some water spilled 
over my finger and froze, turning into ice. When my respected mother woke up, I presented her the glass of water. My finger had stuck to the glass because of the ice. As I detached my finger from the glass, its skin came off, causing bleeding. Seeing it, my mother asking, what is it? I told her the whole story. Listening to it, she raised her hands and made dua, Oh Allah, I am pleased with him. You also be pleased with him. Hazrat Ba Yazid Bastami, Rahmatullah then the fame he got, the mansab, the status he got, is because of the blessed dua of her mother. So try to do such action that you will gain the blessed duas of your mother. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, mashallah, welcome back to our beautiful episode in Silsila. We were discussing the excellence, the beauties of dua of uh, making dua and supplicating in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah another beautiful way of your dua being accepted in the court of Allah is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with beautiful names subhanallah very beautifully Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned this is mentioned in Al-Mustadrak that Allah azza wa jalla has appointed an angel upon his holy name Arhamur Rahimin whoever utters it three times the angel calls out ask as Arhamur Rahimin is paying attention to you. Subhanallah. Similarly, uttering Ya Rabbana five times is also very effective for the dua to be answered. After mentioning this blessed word five times in the Holy Quran, it has been said, Fastajaba lahum rabbuhum. Translation from Kanzuliman, so their Lord accepted their prayer. It has been narrated by Imam Jafar Sadiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is mentioned in Tafsir Ruhul Ma'ani. The person who utters Ya Rabbana five times at the time of helplessness, Allah Azzawajal will protect him from the thing he is scared of and whatever he needs will be granted. Another beautiful manner of making dua which ulama Kiram have mentioned is that a good deed should be performed before you make dua. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Imam Jazri rahmatullahi ta'ala has mentioned Adabu du'ai minha تَقْدِيمُ عَمَلٍ صَالِحٍ وَذِكْرُهُ عِنْدَ الشِّدَّةِ To remember Allah Azza wa Jal in every difficulty and to perform a good deed before making dua are amongst the manners of dua. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And likewise, when you make dua, as I mentioned in the beginning, when you make dua by using the wasila, the medium, like a good deed, he has sincerely performed in the court of Allah, then Allah Azza wa Jal answers his dua for the sake of that wasila, for the sake of that medium. SubhanAllah, a very beautiful uh, narration is mentioned in the book Fazani Riyadh Salihin that Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated, in the previous era, three men were traveling somewhere. It suddenly began to rain. In order to seek refuge, they entered a cave to spend the night. When they entered the cave, a rock slid from the mountain and blocked the entrance of the cave. Having seen this, they said, there is only one way to get rid of this trouble, and that is to make dua by presenting the wasila of our good deeds in the court of Allah Azzawajal. One of them said, O oh Allah Azzawajal, my parents were old, but I did not give my children and servants milk before serving my parents first. One day, I ended up very far away in search for wood. When I returned, I found that my parents had fallen asleep. I brought some milk for them, but felt it was inappropriate to awaken them, and I did not want to give milk to my family before my parents, so I spent the whole night standing with the milk bowl in my hand. When the morning dawned, I offered them the milk. O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, if I had performed this deed only for your pleasure, then bring us salvation from this trouble by virtue of his dua, the rock moved slightly, but not enough for them to exit. Second person said, O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, I loved my uncle's daughter very much. I expressed my evil desire to her, but she refused. One day, she came to me for help. Being a victim of poverty, I gave her 100 dinars on condition that she would satisfy my evil intentions. She had no choice and she agreed. And when we were alone and I overpowered her, she said, Fear Allah, 
and do not commit this sin. On hearing this, I left her and abstained from the sin, though I deeply loved her. I did not get the dinars back from her as well. O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, if this deed of mine was solely for your pleasure, then bring us salvation from this trouble. The rock moved a bit more, but still not enough for them to exist. The third man said, O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, I employed some men for labor, and all of them except one took their wages. I invested his wage in business and made a lot of profit. Sometime later, he came to me and demanded his wage. I responded, these camels, cows, goats, and servants that you see all belong to you. He said, are you joking with me? I replied, no, I am not. It is the truth. On hearing this, he took all his wealth and went away leaving nothing. O Allah Azza wa Jal, if this deed of mine was solely for your pleasure, then please save us from this difficulty. As soon as he made the dua, the rock moved away completely and they exited the cave. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Regarding this beautiful hadith, Allama ibn Battal rahmatullahi ta'ala has said, if a person has a good intention and makes dua through the wasila of those deeds which he performed purely for the pleasure of Allah Azzawajal, then it is hoped that his dua will be answered in the court of Allah. When the people trapped in the cave made dua through the wasila of those deeds which they performed only for the pleasure of Allah Azzawajal, subhanallah, and were hopeful that the entrance of the cave would open due to these wasilas, and Allah Azzawajal blessed them by answering their duas and granted them salvation from the cave. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Salli wa al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Another very beautiful and uh, inspiring, heart-touching incident. The effective way of dua being accepted in the court of Allah is you make dua through the wasila and the medium of the good deeds which you have performed only for the pleasure of Allah. Remember, you're not doing any deeds. Whatever deeds you are doing, you are ma'adhala, not doing a favor on Allah subhanahu Allah Ta'ala is Rahman Rahim. Allah Ta'ala is Ghani. He is independent. He is not in need of your actions. Your entire life you spend ibadat. He is not in need of your ibadat. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not in need of your actions. The angels are praising Him. The entire creation is praising Him. Even if nobody praises Allah Azza wa Jal, still He doesn't need anyone's praise. But you do these actions. Why? So you may go close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So your deeds may be accepted in the court of Allah. You may gain rewards from the court of Allah. So when you do these actions only for the pleasure of Allah and you make dua, Ya Allah, I did this deed only for your sake, Ya Allah. Nobody was watching me. Nobody knew about it, Ya Allah. I did it. You know about it. Ya Allah, you, you are alimun bidhati sudur. You know everything in the heart, in the mind, in the thoughts. You are aware of everything, Ya Allah. Nothing is hidden from you. You see everything. You hear everything. You know everything, Ya Allah. I did that deed. It was only for your sake, Ya Allah. If you have accepted it. If you know, Ya Allah, you know. If you have accepted it, Ya Allah, you know, Ya Allah, if in my heart my intention was only for you, solely for you, Ya Allah, then please accept my dua in your court, Subhanallah, and grant me this which I am asking. Subhanallah. Inshallah, you will see your dua will be accepted in the court of Allah. MashaAllah. Another very beautiful uh, point which Ulama Ikram has given us, and one more thing Ulama Ikram mentioned is that you must always make dua for permissible things. Remember, it is not allowed to make dua for haram things, for filthy things. Make dua for permissible things, for those things which bring about the pleasure of Allah Azzawajal, for those things that bring the pleasure of the beloveds of Allah, the Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. You can't make dua that, you know, Ma'adhullah, Ya Allah, give me this alcohol, Ya Allah, allow me to play, to, to gamble, or Ma'adhullah, all these kinds of sins, this haram. You are mocking Allah Azzawajal, you are joking with Allah Azzawajal, you are playing with Allah Azzawajal, Ma'adhullah. Make good intentions for you, your parents, your family members, your ummah, the, the people around you, your nation, everyone. Make good intentions for them, subhanAllah, from the bottom of your heart. And inshallah, your du'as will be accepted in the court of Allah. Another effective way, use wasila of your good deeds, which you did solely for the pleasure of Allah. And use the wasila of the beloveds of Allah, azzawajal. subhanAllah, subhanAllah. You will see that because of those beloveds, inshallah, your du'a is accepted in the court of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, make du'a. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our discussion today, whatever we have learned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us abundance of barakah. I make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take me with my parents, you with your parents, everyone with their parents and the murshid al with their relatives, family members in the court of his beloved. 
and most noble Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fulfill everyone's lawful du'as, everyone's lawful desires and fulfill everyone's um, you know, jais murads and jais and permissible du'as and remove everyone's difficulty. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. With these few words, unfortunately, we have come towards the conclusion of today's silsila, today's episode. Remember, instill the love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your hearts, in your mind. This love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the base of your iman, the base of everything. You have this love. By Allah, you have everything. You lose this love. By Allah, you lose everything. We hope to see you soon, inshallah. Till then, be happy, stay happy, be positive, think positive, stay positive, remain positive. We'll meet you inshallah as well in the next episode of the Light of Guidance with something new, a new topic, something exciting inshallah. Till then, be happy, stay happy, keep us in your du'as, keep the entire ummah in your du'as, inshallah, inshallah. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The light of guidance, the light of guidance. The light of guidance, the light of guidance, the light of guidance, the light of guidance, the light of guidance.